Oh, this is the second free throw. This is Dimitri Goodson, a freshman for the Zags into the game number three. Bolden with it. This is Craig. Skip pass Bolden. Trying to go inside more with the defense. I'm not sure that play was there unless you threw it to the rim. No, it was successful one time in the first half where Heifelt was able to lock and Bolden got in the pass. That time might, might have forced the issue on that one. And uh, Moore got actually. Throw it over the defense. You got to throw go it over. Yeah, and Moore was kind of standing there and got a hand on it. You're exactly right. There's a point down. 15 footer. No good. Thompson with the rebound for Pepperdine. Down by 14. Keep in mind, Pepperdine opened this game down 17-0. So they've outscored Gonzaga by three to this point. And Greg coming off a Since horrible then. loss to St. Mary's, 96 to 46. No foul there on the block. Ball out of bounds. Some confusion here. And I believe they're booing, but isn't it Pepperdine basketball? Unless they're booing because there was no foul call. <laughs> hey, I'll take the ball anytime. I don't care if there's a foul call, then that's you know great. But if the ball goes out of bounds and there's a question that, and they give you the ball, well, you should be cheering for that. And they're over to adjust the shot clock, I believe, because it reset at 35. There we go. Now it's down to 11. And of course, that shot did not get to the rim. So 11 on the shot clock for Pepperdine. They were not good at this in the first half on that one play. Let's see if they realize it here. Well, because they had to reset it and the officials were showing them, then yeah, I think they knew that the shot clock was running down. And Bell missed that. That shot may have been deflected off the release from his hand. Pepperdine trying to clog up the middle here. A high low game. Great catch by Heitfeld. Tried to finish, and it comes out. That was a heck of a catch by Michael Thompson now the baseline with a runner. And it drops. And it's a 12-point game. Thompson now with eight. And the Zags just have to continue to do what they're doing, kind of picking apart the zone, finding the holes in the seams. And that last play was awesome. I don't like Josh knew how far under the basket he was when he had to catch that. Golden trying to go to Heifel. Corbin Moore is there defensively. Ball in the corner. This is Goodson. Over three from three this season. Heitfeld with a putt back. And that quiets the crowd. Heitfeld now with 21. Did you see the English on that ball? He had to actually spin that to get it off the backboard because there were two waves hanging on him. Shot away, no good. Day tipped it away. But look who it is. Bell with the loose ball. Darby trying to convert with the reverse. No good. Goodson with it for Gonzaga. They tried to tie him up. And this is Gray. That's long. Bell with a rebound. Lost it out of bounds. And what a game we've got with 14.36 to play, if you can say that about a 14-point game. Well, we're seeing some great efforts and great plays by the Ways. And then here's Josh Heidfeld getting a put back in. Zags up by 14. He has to be happy with the way his team has played since then. Well, again, they are not giving up, and they're doing some good things on the end. They're going to the right people. Bell and Thompson are your two guys that can score. What? Oh, off the inbound from Bolden. Micah Downs. Well, you got your two guys in there, Josh Heifelt and Micah Downs, that can get play above the rim, right? Why not just throw it up there? And that's exactly what Matt Bolden did. And look at this. He's slowly creeping up on the assist to turnover ratio on, on Jeremy. He's at 1.96, so Jeremy better watch it. Downs now with five points. Thompson with five on the shot clock, driving on Downs. That ball may have been deflected. Rebound by Heitfeld. And here's Bolden, far side. Into the corner to Gray. Goodson back to Gray. Heitfeld wanting it inside. Kind of had position on Corbin Moore there. 
kind of like this lineup that uh, Coach Fuse got out there. A lot of speed and a lot of aggressiveness on the perimeter with Josh kind of going from block to block. And Bell took it away from Bolden. This will be a lay-in for Pepperdine. Took it away from behind Craig. He's got 12. Well, he's out of energy. He's because he's expended so much. The first half we saw him play above the rim after he stole that one. That's how he just lays it in because he's oh no. And another pick. And the foul here on Goodson. No, they give it to Bell. You know, at six Bell with his second personal foul. At six foot three, you kind of just take it for granted. But look at the length on the young man. He, I don't. I think you give the foul to Goodson there, Craig. That's yeah. That's a tough call. I think the official was trailing and he couldn't see it. All his, uh, well, he didn't Bell call had the, the foul in the initial strip. It was when they were chasing, chasing the, the loose ball. ball. Yeah, and Meach was trying to keep him off, and I think Bell had just as much to write that loose ball as anybody. Height felt to Goodson. He lays it in along the baseline. Goodson's first points of the game, and it's back to 16. This is Dupree inside, working on downs, lost it out of bounds, and it stays with Pepperdine. And Austin Day checking back in, and Dimitri Goodson going to the bench. It's got to be discouraging for the Waves, though. Every time they feel like they're making a move or anything on the Zags, they look back up the scoreboard, and it's what, 16 again? They just can't get it under. 10. I think if you can get it under 10, then you, it's a whole different ball game. But they have, I think the closest they got was t uh, 12, probably, right? No, it was uh, 11 at one point. It 45, was 11, 34, yeah. It was 11 at one point. And I think you're right about getting it under 10 because that'll put a whole diff different level of pressure on Gonzaga if they can get it to single digits. Yeah. But right now, back to 16 is Hornbuckle fires the three. That was long, but he runs down the long rebound. That was long shots. It's pretty simple. It comes long rebounds. And here's Bell. That shot's off. Hyped up, tipped it around. And a foul called here on Pepperdine. One of the best drills when I'm at GU's practices that I love to watch is a rebounding drill where they just go and block somebody out. And that time, Matt Bolden didn't just watch the shot and go after the rebound. He went and blocked somebody out, specifically Dupree, and was able to get the foul call, keeping Dupree away from the rebound. Dupree's first foul. That's five on Pepperdine on this half. Here's Heitfeld. Left that short. Tip back by Day, and he draws the personal foul. No, they're going to call this offensive foul. This is on Gonzaga, and this is on Micah Downs, number 22. They didn't have a really good view from what Michael was doing, but offensively, when you see the shot go up, you want to go to the baseline and then come back out. And I think that's what Michael was trying to do, but he might have got a little too aggressive. That's two now on Downs. Two on Gonzaga, 12 15 to play. You know, right now, Gonzaga's bench has got to really step up. They're being outscored 20 to 7 by Pepperdine's bench. Dupree. There's Jackson with a 20. They shoot the three. That one's off, right side of the rim. Flying in there for the rebound is Subtle. And now Dane Subtle will go to the free throw line. This is Dane Subtle Jr. We'll tell you more about that story when we come back. Off the inbound play. Look at the lock and load from Micah Downs, and Gonzaga leads it by 16. Hi. 58-42. And those of a certain generation will know who that man is. Arsenio Hall. Remember the show, the talk show he had at night? Once uh, the king of nightlife. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Of course, uh, he must live in the Malibu area and comes to a lot of the Pepperdine games. He's a smart man. He lived in Cleveland. So he made a great move out he to Malibu. He was a Clevelander. Yeah. And what I found very interesting as we look at the West Coast Conference standings, Craig, is that when you talked to him, he didn't know who you were. Nope. I didn't have the mullet. I thought everybody know who, knows who Elo is. He didn't recognize me without the mullet. Hey, look, as we watch uh, Settle's free throws, look at the standings in the West Coast Conference. St. Mary's and San Diego playing right now. And that score a minute ago was 41-17, St. Mary's leading. So unless that score changes dramatically, San Diego could be headed towards their first loss in West Coast Conference play.